And no, this isn't all about the law Wednesday, but we just finished talking to Judge Vance Day, and standing in front of me is the man who I hope will become the next circuit court judge in Lane County, and that is Michael Winhausen. How are you, sir? I, I'm doing well, Lars. Thanks for having me on now, the show. Now, I want... Listen, I've told people before, and I'll say it, and you feel free to comment on any of it. There is a woman sitting on the bench in Lane County who is a circuit court judge. She is a judge because she's on the bench by the most common route that judges, unfortunately, end up on the bench, which is they are appointed by governors. I don't believe judges should be appointed by governors. Now, obviously, if a judge gets sick or dies uh, or just decides, I don't want to be a judge anymore, walks away, I get that. What I don't like is that we have elected judges for a reason, because they should reflect the community. They should be qualified, and they should reflect the community. And different communities might choose different judges. What has been the practice, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is that most judges who are sitting on the bench and have been on for a while, when they decide to hang it up, they don't say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run out the rest of my term, and then the voters can pick the next judge. They allow the governor, in the last 30 years, Democrat governor, to pick the next judge, which means the voters don't get a choice. And I'll tell you, Mike Winhausen, I've had more emails in the last two weeks from people saying, what the heck is with this ballot? There are all these judges running for election and nobody's running against them. And I said, well, Mike, what does it take for an, an attorney to run against a sitting judge? It's, it's a tough haul, isn't it? It is, Lars, and it's kind of a mixed bag. In Lynn County, we've had over the last 20 years uh, a couple of our judges specifically engineer their departure so that it would force an election. Um, so it does happen, but but I think you're correct that m in most cases uh, they leave their term early and that gives the governor an opportunity to appoint, and it is uh, a challenge. I've, I'm have i only aware of, a, of one judge, a Lynn County judge, uh, our recently uh, retired presiding judge, Dan Murphy, who successfully mounted a campaign against a sitting judge, and that was in the early 90s. So uh, it doesn't happen often at all. And, Mike, if you were an attorney working in a county and you had clients and you represented people before the bar, if you walk, if you walk in and say, I'm going to challenge this judge and I'm going to run against him and you lose, what's your possible future in that county as a defense attorney uh, appearing in front of that judge and other judges? I, I think the potential uh, in front of uh, for a private attorney is probably a bit greater. I, I'm a prosecutor, and right. so I have an old, a whole office. And, and, and so I think it's a little more difficult for there to be some issues there. Ideally, you would hope that uh, people wouldn't hold grudges, that people wouldn't uh, take it out on on people who came out against them, but human nature is what it is. Let's go back to the woman who's currently sitting in the position that you're running for, and you're running against Judge Faye Stetz Waters, who was appointed a year ago, correct? Uh, she was appointed by uh, hey, Governor Kate Brown. Uh, the press release that I have indicates on the 19th of October of 2017 when she was uh, first appointed, happened to not have an active bar license at that point she in time. She wasn't a lawyer. Well, she was a lawyer. You know, I don't know. She had a law degree. She was a lawyer, but her bar license was inactive. Okay, and so that's so, a technicality. But could somebody with an inactive uh, bar license practice as a lawyer? Uh, no, they specifically cannot, per statute, be like someone with a suspended driver's license driving. They're going to get into trouble. That's what I mean meant by she wasn't a lawyer when she was appointed. Now I understand legally there may be a sure. nuance there, but for the average person. If you can't go to a lawyer and say, can you represent me? No, I don't have an active bar license, so I'm not really a lawyer at that point. The Supreme Court went through some uh, machinations to say, well, we're going to make her back into a lawyer without taking the bar, even though she's been out of the law for about a decade or so. She was appointed, and do you think, and just say you're running against her, she has two years' experience as a lawyer. Was, is she qualified to be a Lynn County Circuit Court judge? Well, let me, I want to just okay. clarify a Correction. couple of, of factual sure. points. So she was licensed to practice law for just under three years. If you look at her work history, she took a job as a, an administrative law judge in 2009. So it's two plus years. I don't want to, you know, but a short period of time. The, um, that said, uh, no, I don't believe someone who has less than three years of work as a lawyer uh, has had absolutely no trials in any area of law uh, prior to becoming a judge, and that's something that you could find on her application for judicial appointment, where they ask, have you had any trials and in what areas over the last five years? She answered zero in all categories. How many trials have you had 
over the course of your career? She answered zero in all categories. This is her own reporting to the governor's office in her application for the position. And I want you to look, I tried to spitball this the other day, but I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a judge or any of that. But I said, judges make critical decisions about civil and criminal trials that are hugely significant to the people before them. And if a judge makes a bad call, it may be corrected on appeal, maybe, if you can afford the appeal, or you may lose your life, liberty, or property because of a case like that. You could go to jail. You could lose your property if a judge makes a bad call. It might be corrected later. But I want you to express why it's so important to have somebody, everybody sitting on the bench as a judge, have a lot of experience so that they are the least likely to make the kind of mistakes that could wreck somebody's life. Well, Lars, it's like any other job. The more you do it, uh, the better you get at it. And uh, there's a reason why the Supreme Court requires at least two years of litigation experience for people applying to be a pro tem or temporary judge um, because it's so crucial. Uh, I've been in the courtroom for over 20 years. I understand the rules of evidence. I understand the rules of procedure. And the only way you can get a good working understanding of those things is if you're practicing law. As she sits on the bench today, Judge Stets Waters doesn't qualify to even be a pro tem judge. It requires three years of uh, legal practice immediately prior to the application and at least two of those years in litigation. Um, so there was a comment actually on my Facebook page where someone had said something to the effect of she wouldn't even be qualified to replace herself on the bench. So it was kind of a, a cute little comment. But in any event, that's that's what we're dealing with. I guess I think about that because I've, I've never been the subject. Well, I've been a subject of a lawsuit, but that's another story for another day. It was a $50 million lawsuit brought by a judge against me for defamation. And he finally agreed to settle out for $3,400. If that tells you kind of the nature of it and being sued by a judge, along with a bunch of DAs and defense attorneys was. But uh, ha never having done it, I just think about somebody walking into a courtroom and if it's a civil case, it may be about an injury. It may be about a piece of property. And these are hugely significant to people. And if they're walking in on a criminal case, whether or not they're treated the right way and the right things are put in front of the jury and the right things are kept from the jury is hugely significant to whether or not both sides in the, in the case, whether it's criminal or civil, get justice. I, I would agree 100%. And, and one of the problems, particularly in the area of, of criminal law, if you have a mistake, and, and there should never be mistakes, but they happen, and they're, they're legitimate errors. Um, but uh, if you have a mistake in a criminal case uh, against a criminal defendant, that's appealable. If you have a mistake made against the state, and ultimately they're representing the interests of the victims in the case, that's not appealable. So if a wrong decision is made, that's the end of the case, and you have someone who should otherwise have been found guilty uh, go free, while you have a victim left behind with with no justice who may be an assault victim a, a rape victim a murder victim and they get no justice and it's not appealable at all so mistakes are absolutely critical then that's correct what else would you like to tell folks about why you think you deserve to be on the bench well uh, you know in addition to my experience Lars I, I've been a part of Lynn County for over 20 years uh, I've, I've lived there. I've worked with the, the law enforcement community and other uh, community partners. I have the support of the entire law enforcement community. I have the support of our state representatives, Andy Olson and Sherry Springer, uh, and other members of the community. So I've been part of that community, and I get my support in this campaign from that community in terms of the funding of my campaign as well as the endorsements. Uh, contrast that with my opponent, where most of her money is coming from out of county, and in some cases, uh, out of state, um, and uh, that's where the sport's coming from. There was a recent op-ed in our local paper, the Albany Democrat Herald, that was penned by three uh, Cape Brown appointed judges, uh, one out of Polk County, one out of Multnomah County, one out of Deschutes County, who basically attacked me. Uh, so you have this exterior, you know, outside of Lynn County attack on me coming from judges who have been appointed by Cape Brown. So there's all the, there are all these forces trying to push this person who I would argue is unqualified onto the Lynn County bench. And it does a disservice to the citizens of Lynn County and to the practitioners of law in Lynn County. One of my big gripes with my profession is I don't think there are enough people asking the why question. And I know that there may be people who haven't heard me talk about your situation and this race before.
But I'm going to point something out, and then you can come in any way you like. But Judge Stets Waters' campaign and people who are advocating for her have pointed out in their campaign literature on her behalf that she is three things that they have sought to highlight. She is female, she is African-American, and she is lesbian, a member of the LGBT community. Do you think that played a role in Kate Brown's choice to choose an unqualified person for the bench? Well, Lars, I, I'm not going to speculate on, on Governor Brown's okay. motivations for the things that she does. I would be dismayed, to say the least, if uh, any decision were made on those sorts of criteria. It's, it's just not appropriate. If um, you have a person who is qualified for the position, uh, has the experience uh, that is necessary to do the job, and they are either, well, and they are denied that job because yeah. of those kinds of issues. I agree. Or given the job, uh, that's just wrong, and, and I would like to think that uh, that didn't play a part, but I'm not going to speculate. Well, the only reason, Mike Winhausen, that I'm asking the question is I agree. It'd be wrong to deny a judge, a ju deny a person any kind of position, whether it's to be a student or an employee or a judge or a governor and say, I, I don't want that person because of those personal characteristics. I think it's equally as wrong, perhaps worse, to say this person isn't qualified for the job, and I think Kate Brown did say, but I'm going to give it to her because it checks some important boxes for me, Kate Brown, as a politician. I believe that's the case, and I would ask Gov Governor Kate Brown that question if she would ever agree to an interview. I've asked her several times in person, uh, at least uh, one time, and she has always said she's not interested in talking about or answering questions like that. Good luck to you, and what's the website if people want more information about your campaign? So you can go to Michael Winhausen for Lynn County Judge on Facebook, or you can go to winhausen.com, which also has a link to the Facebook page. And I just want to say thank you to the people of Lynn County for all of their support. I, I really really appreciate it. Mike, thanks for coming in in person. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to The Lars Larson Show. It's egregious.